Welcome to the Undergraduate International Foreign Language Application for New Awards webinar. My name is Tanya Richardson, and I'll be going through the 2018 process on how to apply for the USEFUL program. The purpose of this webinar is to go over a few pointers on how to apply to the USEFUL program. We'll be discussing the program overview, eligibility, selection criteria, the review process, tips, and Q's and A's. Program overview. The purpose of the Undergraduate International Studies Program is to provide funds to plan, develop, carry out programs to strengthen and improve undergraduate instruction in international studies and foreign language. Useful program eligibility. In order to apply under this program, you must be either an institution of higher education, a consortium of institutions, a partnership between a nonprofit or educational organization, or a nonprofit agency on its own. Institutional eligibility. An institution application must contain plans to improve and strengthen undergraduate instruction in both international studies and foreign languages and be either multi or interdisciplinary in design. Under nonprofits and organizations, the secretary may award grants under this part to private and nonprofit agencies and organizations. This includes scholarly organizations that propose projects that will make an especial significant contribution to strengthening and improving undergraduate education. For 2018, we have approximately $2.8 million. We hope to make up to 28 new awards. For the single applicants, you can request up to $95,000 per year, and for consortial applicants, up to $150,000 per year. The average single applicant will receive roughly 90000 with 150000 going to the average consortial applicant. Eligible program activities include the following. Developing a global studies and international studies program. Developing a global issues project. Developing area studies program and languages and creations of international studies and professional pre-study programs such as engineering. They also include specialized teaching materials, establishing internships and in-service training opportunities, and also creating overseas research opportunities. Matching requirements. For every dollar received from the federal support, you must match a dollar. Think of it as a dollar-to-dollar -dollar match. The majority of our grantees match with a combination of cash or in-kind amounts equal to the total support and pro total project cost. Allowable costs include the following, summer stipends and salaries, acquisition costs for library and teaching materials, professional service costs for consultants, costs associated with developing and enhancing study abroad programs. Please note that for student costs, you must limit your budget to 10% of the actual federal request. For study abroad costs, it should be no more than 10%. Costs for domestic and overseas faculty travel can be included in your budget. Changes in useful for program 2018. For 2018, we are going back to our single tier process, meaning that all criteria will be reviewed under one tier. There is no longer a two tier process. Evaluation will be included in the first tier. Under the application review guidance, all applicants will be evaluated based on the following criteria, plan of operation, quality of key personnel, budget and cost effectiveness, adequacy of resources. All applications submitted to IFO will also be included under the following criteria, commitment to international studies, elements of proposed international study program, need for prospective results and proposed program. Application review for consortial and public and private nonprofit agencies. You must respond to the following, need for and potential impact of proposed project in improving international studies worth 40 points. Now the selection criteria. Under the useful program, we have eight main selection criteria, two opportunities to earn competitive preference priorities up to five points with a total of 105 points for those who are single and consortial applicants and for those who are applying as a nonprofit you can only earn 100 points. As you can see for the nonprofit agencies and organizations, 100 points is the maximum you can earn under the useful program. Now the breakdown. Plan of operation, quality of key personnel, budget, evaluation plan, adequacy of resources are considered to be your core selection criteria for everyone. 
Under plan of operation, here's where the applicant will give a brief introduction of their institution or their partners. They'll talk about their plans to promote efficient uh, administration on the project. They'll talk about their objectives, how they relate back to the useful program, and their design for the overall project, all under the plan of operation. Under key personnel, which is worth a maximum of 10 points, you'll describe the project director's education experience and other qualifications. You'll also discuss the percentage of time that will be used or set aside for the project. You'll discuss the other key personnel that are important to the project, their education, their experience, and other qualifications, and also any kind of non-discriminatory actions that are in place by the institution will be discussed under key personnel. Budget and cost effectiveness, 10 points. This is where the applicant will discuss the important costs and in how they relate back to the project activities. They'll discuss their federal requests, their matching, and other partnership matches, all in this section. This is where you will break down a year-by-year -year budget, budget narrative, and relate all the costs back to the overall project and project goals. Evaluation plan. 20 points. The section is extremely important. Under the evaluation plan, this is where the applicant will talk about the evaluating on the project effectiveness, what data will be collected and analyzed, how the objectives are quantifiable. They'll also discuss the impacts of the project will have, describe any evaluation methods used, provide a timetable of the evaluation process, any outside um, influences to the evaluation program, whether it be an outside evaluator will be discussed into this section, any results, any examples of tools that you're hoping to use under the project will be included in this section. Adequacy of resources, five points. Here's where the applicant will describe the resources or in kind matching for the institution, um, whether it be library resources or data collection. They'll discuss any kind of language labs, equipment, supplies, adequate to carry out the project's goals. For institutions and consortias that are applying to a useful program, you will address the commitment to international studies worth 10 points. Here's where you'll describe your current strengths, including the types and numbers of international program studies you are currently offering, to what extent that any planning has been done to um, include your administrator and faculty on to improve your international footprint. If you're using um, any kind of personnel or other resources to increase your international and globalized efforts, or if you're making optimal use to uh, using your matching funds will all go under this section. Elements for International Studies Program, 10 points, will only be responded to for international and consortial applicants only. Here's where you'll describe the extent of which your proposed activities will contribute to implementing the program for international studies in foreign languages, discuss your interdisciplinary aspects of your project, how many new and revised courses you'll be developing, um, how you improve the overall language um, expansion if language is your ultimate goal for this grant. Under need for results and proposed program, you'll describe the extent for which the proposed activities are needed, what will be the extent of international studies and foreign language at your institution, and how they're going to be implemented, what is the likelihood that the activities will be continued after the project ends. Sustainability is important here. This is where you'll talk about the project and how it will become self-sustaining after federal funding will be ending. And describe how you'll share the materials and results of the program with other institutions of higher education, if applicable. Public and private nonprofit agencies will address the following criteria. The need for an impact of projects to improve international studies worth 40 points. This is where the applicant will discuss the use of federal funds to achieve the results. The impact that it will make to the contribution of studying undergraduate foreign language programs and how it will make a major impact either regionally or nationally, all will be discussed in this section of the application. For 2018, USEFUL has two competitive preference priorities. We will award either two or three points for priority preference number one that meets this priority. If an MSI or a community college is a single applicant or is the lead applicant in this consortium partnership, the application will receive three points. If an MSI or community college is a member or consortial partnership, 
but not the lead, you'll receive an additional two points. So it's either two or three points to meet this priority number one. Under competitive preference priority number two, applications from higher education institutions or consortial institutions that require entering students to have successfully completed at least two years of a secondary foreign language instruction or that require each graduating student to have earned two years of post-secondary credit in foreign language or have demonstrated the equivalent in competence in foreign, in foreign language over two years. If you meet this priority, you can earn two additional points for a total of five additional competitive preference points available. Under our invitational priorities, USEFUL has two as well. Please note that there are no points given nor penalized if you choose to address the invitation priorities. Invitation priority number one, substantive training in less common taught languages. Applications that propose programs and activities focus on language instruction or development, focusing on areas except for French, German, or Spanish. For priority number two, developing interdisciplinary curriculum. Applications that propose to create innovative curriculum that provide combination of teaching or international studies in one of the following academic areas. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, which is STEM, business, economics, public health, international comparative education, and computer science. Programs can be located within the applicant's home institution or partner institution. And please note, there will be no points given, no points penalized if you choose to address or not to address the invitation priorities. What you see now is a sample useful budget worksheet. So please take note that, these, that the sample is broken down into categories, one for your federal requests, one for your matching, and one for the a total budget, as well as for year two, the same. It's important that the readers see exactly how the money is going to be spent, how the money is going to be matched. And I highly encourage you to use this format as a guide when you're developing your matching budget as well as any kind of second or third party funding you're receiving or requesting. Useful performance measures. Although we consider useful to be a seed money program, we are, we are tasking our grantees and applicants to be able to provide evidence that they are meeting their goals and objectives of this project. IFL has developed two performance measures under this program. The first measure being the percentage of useful projects that have, that have added or enhanced courses to international education. The second one it will be the number of consortial projects that have designed or developed undergraduate degree programs. Those are the performance measures that we're hoping to address and collect data from. Appendices. In order for your application to be competitive, we recommend the following appendices. Your program profile form, supplemental information form, letters of support, curriculum vitae of uh, key personnel, sample evaluation assessment tools, your PMF form that's also included in the application instruction, and any kind of special waivers um, that you're requesting as far as matching for those who are eligible for Title III or Title V matching. Application tips. We encourage you to start early. Please review applications or abstracts posted on our websites. Contact your funded grantee friends or associates to get, um, to get some feedback or some uh, pointers on how to apply to the useful program. Develop linkages. We encourage you to stay connected to your global community. Review our website and our FAQs on our website. Um, designate a management team that can help with a focus group. For example, you might want to bring in your budget officer or your sponsor program director to help as far as um, editing and, de and um, developing the actual content of your application. You want to request letters of support that are actually germane to your overall objectives and goals of the program. And you want to identify your needs for receiving useful funds up, up front. Um, and you want to do this early. And of course, when in doubt, seek me out as a program officer, Danielle Richardson. When writing your proposal, you want to address all the selection criteria. And please note that we give you guidance of how to address the selection criteria in the application package. You want to provide as much specificity of detail as possible in your budget, your budget narrative, in, in, your, in your evaluation plans, in addressing the overall criteria. The more you provide as far as what you're doing, how you're going to do it, 
why it's important and why there's a need, the better your chances of receiving funding. Submitting your application, please register through grants.gov. This is the only online system that we will accept applications and is unforgiving, meaning that when the application closes uh, on the scheduled due date, it closes down. We have no authority to open the application back up, so we encourage you to apply early. Please back up your information. If you have any questions on um, how to navigate the system, please reach out to the help desk and do not waste the last minute. Let's move to the questions and answer period. Right now I have Joanne Jung, our Eiffel intern will be assisting with the questions and answers. Can useful funds be used to support students in a study abroad or internship program? Yes, up to 10% of funds each budget year can be used to support students in an overseas program closely linked to the program being developed or enhanced on the home campus. What techniques are helpful in preparing an application narrative and other important information for the program? It may be useful to first read over program materials posted on the useful website, such as the previous year's application and CDN, abstracts of funded projects, etc. Once you have become familiar with the program, you may want to have contact with program staff to discuss your particular proposal idea or to visit the useful office to read over successful applications. Can we use the funds to pay stipends to students with international student status out of our cost share funds? Any cost share funds still will need to meet the goals and objectives of your proposed program. You can use cost share match to support cost charge to international students. However, you would need to show that providing these funds for this purpose helps you to fulfill planned objectives for the project. We would also like to verify if a faculty evaluator within our school but outside of our language partner program, implementation and administration would be considered to be an outside evaluator. An outside evaluator should not be directly linked to your institution and who is not an integral part of the project. Note, all applicants should keep in mind that when developing your budgets, both federal and matching, you should be prepared to thoroughly explain related costs and how they are legitimate in the case of an audit. May the budget include travel, housing, and scholarships to host international students on our campus in a bilateral exchange program? If so, if there is a cap on this expense. Any financial resources directed toward international students should come from the matching side. Applicants can match as much as they need both in resources and actual cash support. You can use a third-party contribution to cover costs related to a bilateral exchange program. In the past, K-12 outreach has been competitive priority for a useful grant. It is not listed in 2018 competition. Does this mean that we should avoid incorporating K-12 outreach into our projects this year? If your proposed program includes outreach to K-12 institutions, please include linked activities into your application. In previous years, a list of pertinent courses modified, enhanced, or developed were included in the, in the appendices. Do we still need to include a list of courses relevant to our program? Although it is not required, you can include a course list in the appendices section of your application. Is there a way for an institution to check eligibility for Title III? You can check your Title III and Title V eligibility status by referring back to the Federal Registrar Notice. I didn't get from the statute that study abroad scholarships could be 10% of both the federal and grant match. Did I understand that correctly? Study abroad is capped at 10% of the federal request. You can match more than 10% on the institutional matching side. Just to clarify, the evaluation plan needs to be incorporated to the project narrative, correct? Yes, the evaluation plan criterion should be included in your program narrative section of the application. Please see the application instructions and all application materials which are on our grants page online. Is there a matching requirement? Yes, applicants are required to make a non-federal contribution to the costs associated with carrying out the project. Applicants can meet the one-to-one -one match with in-kind or cash contributions. For example, if you request $90,000 in year one, you must match it in equal dollars in year one. Please note, 
All applicants who are eligible under the special rule must provide a copy of their Title III or Title V eligible status letter from the Department of Education and base their budgets on their exemption status. I know we can't use unclaimed indirect costs for match. However, can we take the 8% on our match expense? Yes, you can claim 8% indirect costs on both the federal request and matching side. Can we view samples of previously funded successful applications? Yes, we have sample narrative online starting at 2014. Please go to the awards section on the useful website and click on successful grant applications. Could the consortium include foreign universities? And if this the case, it would be for three years of duration? Although you can work with foreign universities on international activities, such as study abroad or collaboration on curriculum, by definition of a consortium partner, they must be an accredited U.S. institution. Can the external evaluator be from the Department of Education? Under the useful program, federal employees are barred from working in and can't work for or be a benefactor in any federally funded grant. For more information on our program, we encourage you to visit our websites on our, for applications, sample abstracts, links to, to provide for more useful information. Please visit these websites, including the um, Grants.go website, how to become a peer reviewer, and subscribe to our listserv. Again, my name is Tanya Richardson. I highly encourage you to contact me if you have any questions on how to apply to the program, on the selection criteria, on the budget. Please visit our website, www.ed.gov, on all things useful. This concludes our 2018 Useful Application Webinar. Thank you.